this is the release of that, yes. you know, so you can be in flow and you can have flow throughout your body because usually uh, three, there comes activity, yes. right? So yeah. bike riding, yeah. you're in the present moment, yeah. skiing, yeah. skiing is such Perfect. a great, yeah. great way because you're in the beauty of the mountains and then you're also in the beauty of the exercise. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick minute to share a little message with you. I am super passionate about creating the very best YouTube channel that I can, that Scott and I can, to share our wisdom, insights, experiences, knowledge with you to help you on your journey of spiritual growth, of finding clarity and more balance in your life. So if you could do it, me a huge favor, if you enjoy our content every week, if it brings value into your life, if you could please remember to like and subscribe, click the little red bell so that you're notified when we put a new episode out each week and then comment. Let us know in the comments if the content is valuable, if there's something in there that is said that resonates, if there's something in there that helps, if there's something in there that you're like, wait a minute, I want to dive a little deeper into this. Let me know in the comments and if you have any ideas for what would be helpful for you on your journey to becoming more whole and finding more peace in your life, let us know in the comments. We'd love to make some more content for you. See you on the other side. Welcome to another episode of the Quadrant Theory mini series this week. So we covered what the Quadrant Theory is. We covered Quadrant 1. Now we're going to cover Quadrant 3. Three. My favorite. Quadrant three. So if you don't know what those are, go back and watch the previous videos it's in this playlist of what the quadrant theory is. So you have at least a little bit of an understanding of what the hell we're talking about. And then you can watch quadrant one, get an idea of that. And then we're going to go in quadrant three. And then obviously the rest of the mini series will include quadrant four and quad we will end with quadrant two. Okay. So we're going to dive straight into it this week. Why should you watch? Because you're going to understand when you're balanced in your quadrant three, when you're imbalanced in your quadrant three, and ways that you can activate your quadrant three. So let's start with what is quadrant three? Quadrant three is play. It's fun. It's flow. It's being in the present moment. It's being silly. It's laughter. It's like a professional athlete can be in when you are in flow, whether if you're a professional athlete or you're an artist or you're a musician, you Actually, can really- Actually, that would be quadrant four is flow. Oh, Just well, to... there you go. I'll well, say so it shows you how much I know. <laughs> quadrant three is Maybe right you before. should ask the question. Quadrant three is right before. Murphy's in three right now flow. and he's gonna knock up. But all over. the play and all that is absolutely. Yeah. All the, the play, the yes. fun, the love. The present moment. The, yes, that's- yeah. I mean, ultimately, if there is a quadrant that you want to be in most of the time, it would be three. Everybody would want that. But you have to understand, you have to be in all quadrants. You have to be an equal opportunity quadrant. Employer. Employer. Yeah. Yeah. So you may have a tendency, as we describe quadrant three, quadrant four, to go, yeah, that's where I want to be all the time. I want to stay in quadrant three and four. This is natural. I want to ride my bike all the time. Yeah. I want to go fishing all the time. I want to be on a boat every day. I or want... I want to be in the field, in the quantum field. I want to meditate all day. I want to be out of my body. I want to be in that feeling. I don't want to be around anyone. Yeah. These can, can all be associated with the right side of the brain, quadrant three and four. Yes. Totally normal, natural to think that. However, we believe that we are in a 3D existence for a reason. Mm -hmm. Quadrant three and four is m more energy than matter. So I like to think of it as like the right side of the brain, quadrant three and four is the wave. The left side, quadrant one and two is the particle. So you have the particle and the wave, right? So oh, that's good. three and four is mm -hmm. more energy because you're present. So three mm -hmm. and four live absolutely in the present moment. Their time and space does not exist when you're there. So that those are symptoms and characteristics of, of quadrant three specifically, like he said, is play. It's like Tigger. It's like, it's the emotional right part of the brain. So the lower right part of the brain. So it's the emotional aspect of you. So it's love. 
It's the frequency, quadrant three is the frequency of unconditional love. It wants to be around its friends. It's a thrill seeker. It's like, let's go on an adventure. Yes. Let's get as many people as we can and go mm -hmm. have fun. However, as we were saying, we believe we're here in a three dimensional life for mm -hmm. a reason, correct? Yes. And in order to operate successfully in a three dimensional world and learn our lessons and work through all of our stuff that our souls want us to work through, we have to have two in one. It's, yeah. it's necessary. Well, because you need rest, right? And you're the wave. So when you're at the top of the wave, you could say that's three, right? You are at a, a yeah. extreme, like, wow, this is the best ever. And then you go down into the trough of the wave that can be the two, the really like, oh, you know, the winter time. Quadrant three is the summertime yep. of of the quadrant theory yeah. where quadrant two would be the winter time you're recovering you're recovering from the high yeah. you just played a football game in flow now you need to recover your body needs to recover your mind needs to recover it needs to rest so you can do it again yeah. um it's same as an artist you know yeah. you, all this sure. flow comes out of you then you need to rest and take in information so then you can go back into quadrant three and let that flow happen again with a new song or a new, you know, yeah. Yeah, so we use a couple different techniques, but one of them is the flow cycle and there's four stages to the four cycle. The flow cycle, excuse me, stage one is struggle. That's quadrant one, we went through that last week. Quadrant three is the next phase, which is release. And all that means is literally releasing anything that you just did up in quadrant one. So imagine it as you're in quadrant one, you're working on something, you're, you're trying to put something together. What happens is if you stay stuck in that and you don't go then to the release phase, that's when you start getting fight or flight, you start getting overwhelmed, stress, anxiety. So the reason why moving into quadrant three is so important is because it literally flushes out Ow. all those stress chemicals. Yes. So yeah, because that, again, like, when you're in that stress, we now know that stress then creates dis-ease, right? Yeah. So that's where your dis-ease comes from yeah. because you, you have no way out. Yeah. You are locked in. You have all this energy, this stress, this endorphin, all of that is locked inside your body. Did I say that right with the endorphin? No, endorphin. no and I did not. But, but I make but it up as I adrenaline. go. Adrenaline. Adrenaline. Yeah, it gets stuck Cortisol. in your body, right? Yeah. So then this is the release of that, yes. you know, so you can can be in flow and you can have flow throughout your body because usually uh, three there comes activity yes. right so yeah. bike riding yep. you're in the present moment yeah. skiing yep. skiing is such Perfect. a great yeah. great way because you're in the beauty of the mountains and then you're also in the beauty of the exercise so that's really why quadrant three is so important so, important. so. yeah especially if you're a natural born quadrant one, three is your lesson. So yes. three is really important that you learn to implement. So the other. So oh, let, 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 let's let dive there a little bit, just mm -hmm. for a minute. So what she means by that is your lesson. So your quadrant one, your lesson is quadrant three. So if you're quadrant one, you're a business owner, you're, you know, you have a family and it's go, go, go all the Leadership time. Roles, Structure. Community. There's schedules, I have to get this done, I need to make this amount of money, I have to make sure the bills get paid, I gotta pay the taxes, I gotta make sure. Take boom, care of my boom, family, boom, boom. take care of my community, yes. take all, care of my all, all things that you need to do. If you get stuck in that, again, you get burnt out, right? We've heard that before. Oh, he just burned out. Yep. Or, oh, my oh God, you you're not. All the time now. Yeah. Burn and then, out. or somebody, you know, oh, yeah, he got cancer. He was just going, you know, burning his fuse Michael at both J. ends. Fox. Michael J. Fox, right? Parkinson's, if you know that story mm -hmm. of really, he tells you why. He yeah. was going like 20 mm -hmm. hours a day. Literally. It was insane. Yeah. Like, body can't keep up to that. Mm -hmm. So the body says, whoa. I don't, I'm shutting this down, man. You, you're not getting the, you're, it happened to me. <laughs> I mean, literally paralyzed laying in a bed because my body said, he's not getting it. He's not going to, he's not going to regulate. We need to shut him down. So I learned, I learned being locked in quadrant one. That is the result. I was laid paralyzed in a bed. So Perfect. now I really go towards quadrant three. 40 years I built a business. I had the employees. I had all the things that were weighing on me. 
quadrant three is not being in that at all. So complete flip of the coin. I'm on the other side of the coin now. The polarity of it, yeah. Only because 40 years in this, I have a lot to let go of. A lot of that energetic, that stress that lives inside your body. We talk about cellular memory and how your new cell learns from your old cell. So if you don't learn, you will never change bi biologically. It's by us changing and having new conversations in our head that then the cells can then start to change and not take the memory on of the old cells. It can take on a new memory because you're thinking it, if that makes sense. So that's why this is such a big deal. Quadrant three is huge. It's necessary, but it also, just like quadrant one, it has to be regulated. Has to be balanced. Yeah. So if you are a fire sign, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, your natural born quadrant is three, which just means these characteristics come natural to you. They're your gifts to offer the world because they come easily and naturally to you. So a lot of times these are actors actresses they're very if you think of like fiery and on stage think of little kids right yes little yes. kids they love to uh, people no, watching no, them they love dancing yes. like they'll say things they don't care if it hurts yes. anyone's feelings right like oh you're fat or something like they don't have the wisdom yet of quadrant four to to go oh maybe that might hurt someone's feelings because they're so in the present moment they don't you you in other words, you're not thinking about any identity, ego, anything like that. You're literally just thinking in this moment and usually very, their natural born quadrant threes are usually very charismatic mm -hmm. because they have that sort of fiery, playful, childlike energy. So that comes really easy. They don't like structure. But again, as he said, it's important that you have balance because when you're not in balance in quadrant three, that can also, you know, create some issues. So I'm just going to quickly go over a couple symptoms of imbalanced if you're imbalanced in quadrant three if you if remember how we said last week it's always only just a volume issue a, a, a tank level issue it's it's never that's good that's bad i need to be here it's just constantly tuning your instrument in your brain so that you're creating neural networks to each of these quadrants, okay? If the volume's really low in your in your quadrant three, meaning you don't have pathways going there, you don't have the highways going there that you need to yet, you may struggle with being way too serious all the time. So you find yourself like, I can't, that's childlike, or I can't do that, mm -hmm. or I don't have time for that. You don't, you're afraid to take any kind of risk. Risk, adventure, that's all part of quadrant three, mm -hmm. imbalance. Will not venture into the unknown. So having a really hard time, so quadrant one is by me level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it all. Mm -hmm. Quadrant three is through me. So, oh, I'm going to let the universe come in and, and co-create with me. Yeah. Right? So if you're, if you're addicted to schedules, I need to schedule yes. out my day. Yeah. You're, you're locked quadrant one. Your volume super high. Super, super <laughs> high. And you you have no volume in three at all. Yeah, exactly. There's no time for the unknown. You need to plan out. We all know people just yes, like that. We do. If you struggle with being really self-conscious really shy if you easily give up on things like you don't have the stamina to which is quadrant one the forward direction the leadership the being able to follow through on things very compulsive repetitive or mechanical so if you think of people with ocd it's a perfect example of volume way too high in quadrant one they're very they have to have things in order where mm -hmm. quadrant three is like why i don't care about that right and last one really big one this is a really good indicator for you so quadrant one and four, if you're in those and the volume's really high, you will tend to want to be alone more. You, 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 you tend to be more individual. I, mean, I can't think of the word, like just more introspective. introspective by yourself. Two and three are all about community. Mm -hmm. Two and three are all about being yeah. with others. And so if you find yourself not wanting to be around anyone, it's most likely your volume's too low in your three and probably really high in your one, sometimes even too high in your four as well. So those are low volume. The, the symptoms of being way too high in volume three, meaning you need to regulate because you, know, you, you can struggle in your life if this is on all the time. Impulsive, reckless is a really big one doesn't can't handle any responsibility so you're like no i can't do anything i don't want any responsibility polar opposite of one right so you can struggle with that illogical or flaky lack of focus these all can be your quadrant three is way too high struggles with any kind of organization or structure so you know we have to have the balance of both of those things right lastly like rude 
just rude because you have no filter. No filter. At all. No filter. So those are their symptoms if the volume's turned too high. And then lastly, I'll just go through what does it look like if you're balanced in your quadrant three. So your ability to surrender to outcomes. So you take an action in quadrant one, and then you surrender whatever's going to happen. That's a perfect example of if you're balanced in your three, you know how to sort of do something and then step back and go, okay, I'm going to let the universe finish that job. I'm going to co-create with the universe. I'm going to do my part and let it do its part. Open heart, love, oxytocin, all connection. Just think of immense amounts of love. Really good of a balance quadrant three. Very playful. You know how to be honest and speak truth without being overly aggressive mm -hmm. or overly rude. You love to be with your friends, but you're okay being alone too. So you have a good balance of both of those things. Embodies and integrates self-love compassionate and spontaneous. Spontaneous is a, is a very good indicator that you're, you have balance in that quadrant three. It's really important that we integrate spontaneity in our life. So those are just to give you some indicators of what it looks like. So you know, oh shit, I'm not balanced in my three. My volume's way too high or my volume's way too low. Right? So why does all this matter? Because yeah. you can, if you can start to understand maybe where your kids are if they are in too high in quadrant three and you can help regulate yes. them, yes. right? By not affecting them by your quadrant. Yes. So if if yeah. you know, well, I'm quadrant one heavy, then chances are I'm going to react and teach my kids as if they need to be in quadrant one. But the, the best way to handle that is to understand where they are, yes. what quadrant heavy are they. Yeah. So because that is how you are going to be able to communicate with yes. them. Yes. Right? Yes. Because if they're quadrant three, you can say, this is great. Do all your quadrant three stuff. That's yeah. fantastic. Because it's almost a need. They get it. Yeah. They got to get it out of their body. Yeah. And then when they're in their resting, yes. then they can start to do a quadrant yes. one. And you yeah. start to sw start Slowly. small yes. in the quadrant one task. Yes. And like get this out of the refrigerator. Yes. Right? And yes. then you can build on that thing Absolutely. and bring make it fun. Yes. Bring quadrant one They're because that's how they relate. Yep. And you will have the most balanced child. I yep. promise you. It is it is in peck it is really important when we understand that the people that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, our spouse, our children, our bosses, our you know, people that we work with, our employees. Where are they in the quadrants? Are they a quadrant two? Now you know how to deal with them. You know how to communicate with them effectively to where you're not going to trigger them. You're not going to put them in a place that is going to be uncomfortable for them. Because when that happens, they're going to come back at you. And then you're not going to be able to meet. Right? So by having these maps of understanding where your quadrant dominant is and your supportive mm -hmm. quadrant, mm -hmm. right? So I'm quadrant one dominant, but my supportive is three. Mm -hmm. And well, four, two, four I guess. Would be your, four would be your supportive. Three would be your lesson, but you're learning your lesson. Yeah, now. so I'm very equal in my yeah. quadrants. I'm yeah. very good like with that. Like for an example, he used to say when we first got together, when we would go on vacation, he would be like, I can't do that. Like I have responsibilities. And so he would have a hard time switching over yes. into that. So yes. that's why, you know, he ended up in a bed, but the attributes and characteristics, the reason why he's a natural born quadrant one is because he's associated, his sign Taurus is associated with the earth element, which is quadrant one, just so you guys know. So his, what comes natural to him is be able, be able to literally create in the material world. Yes. He's amazing at that. Yeah. I don't have that skill. I'm a natural born quadrant four. However, we complement each other. I'm a four, he's a one. So we can complement each and other. And we can see each other where we're at. And, yes. and like when she, she would say, I don't understand why can't you do that? Yeah. Why? Because it's yeah. not in my scope. It's unnatural. Yeah. It's unnatural to me. Yeah. I mean, I can be led to it. Yes. But there's a way to be led. That's it's right. not like I'm already up That's there. Right. No, I have to climb a ladder right. to get up there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Perfect but, but knowing where you are is yeah. so key. And yeah. when your partner knows where you are, absolutely. Oh, it's a game changer because then you can appreciate each other. You understand where they're at and this is why they're there. And then all of a sudden you become 
wow, we can really make this work for us because you're dominant in this quadrant, I'm dominant in this quadrant, so now we're regulated not only as an individual, but we're regulated as a, as a collective, right? So that is so huge, yeah. changes everything. Yeah. We've been using this with, you know, couples, we've been using this with individuals, and man, the light bulbs that we get to see go off, and then... And then How? us. <laughs> and then it's just, it's insane. So yeah. please play with this. Use yeah. this. Quadrant three, remember what it is. It's play. It's, it's in the moment. It's the now. It's being in flow. It's important. Guitar players, you know, people mm -hmm. that play music that is in that flow. Remember, you still got to do number one stuff. Yeah. But when you, if, if somebody says you can't play guitar, or you can't go outside until you get all this quadrant one stuff. It's not going to go good for you. You have to know how to regulate not just where you are in a quadrant, but the tasks that go with those quadrants. Yeah, so um, to wrap it up, I'm just going to throw some activities at you guys. If you know, if you watch quadrant, the quadrant one video, you know what happens when your volume is way too high in, in quadrant one and you need to move then into the release phase of the flow cycle, which is quadrant three. So here's some activities that you can do to activate your quadrant three. This isn't to bring balance. Those are different activities. This is just to activate. So coloring, art projects, gardening is a really good one. Knitting, swimming, a comedy movie, dance is a really good one. Any kind of spo spontaneous activity. So like just spo spontaneously going on an adventure. For us, it's skiing, any kind of walking. So just going hiking. out and, and hiking and walking in nature. You can integrate this into your daily life. Integrate five minutes, require yourself five minutes of walking in nature every day. This is naturally going to start to bring balance into this, but you have to commit to those things and make them sustainable as we talked about last time. So those are some activities. And as he said, the thing is that we teach in our 12 week class how to approach our human lives with this holistic view of literally the four parts of our brain so that you're living in balance and in peace in all four quadrants. You don't get stuck in four or two or three. Or, you know, it's the, the only problem with any of these quadrants is getting stuck, having mm -hmm. the volume way too high, yes. too low, and you can't get out of it. And that's what we, the process that we take people through. We're giving you guys a very surface level explanation in the 12 weeks mm -hmm. we dive deep into each quadrant we use carl Jung psychology we use all sorts of the flow cycle the open focus method so if you're interested in that in learning more about that 12-week process through this class that we do we do cohorts so we take a group through the entire 12-week process together you, you really can create community that way and we also add ketamine therapy to the process as well because that's going to help with the neuroplasticity and create creating new neural networks in your brain so that literally in your brain you have neural networks that are balanced in each of these four quadrants so i will put a link in the description of the webinar that you can watch the webinar goes into a little bit deeper explanation of what it is, but you can also just email us and we would be happy to get on a phone call or a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. So we can explain the process to you a little bit more in depth. We can hear where you're at and maybe how the quadrant theory maybe help you to just have more balanced, more inner peace, more clarity, instead of jumping all over the place, not being able to emotionally regulate. So all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm flying high. I'm having all these things manifest. Boom, I crash, I don't know what to do. I, d I stay stuck in my wounded child for too long. I don't know how to get out. This literally is a process to help you through that. We call that chasing chickens. Do we? I do. I just chasing made that up. Chasing chickens. So you're welcome. I love that. Yeah. So we're corralling cats. Next week we will go into quadrant four and then quadrant two, and then we we have a really cool special offer um, since we're ending it on quadrant two of how you can sort of dive deeper into that through the holiday period because that's where all our triggers mm -hmm. can be met. So mm -hmm. we'll have information for that. But let us know in the comments. Was this helpful? Also, let us know. Are you a fire sign? So are you a natural born quadrant three? Can you see how that plays out for you? What are characteristics that you notice in yourself mm -hmm. when you're in quadrant four? We'd love to hear from you guys. That's it. That's that it? it. That's it. That's all we have for you this week. We will see you guys next week. Goodbye.